Gobekli Tepe, the world's oldest and largest megalithic structure ever found, is back in the news like it never has before. You may have seen the headlines going all around the world. In fact, I would venture to say that every single media outlet on planet Earth has made an article about this, declaring that Gobekli Tepe is a temple that was utilized and created by a skull cult. And in case you didn't see the thumbnail of this video, that's what I think about that, and I'm going to explain exactly why. <laughs> but first, if you're not familiar with Gobekli Tepe, let me just share with you a few key points about it. It's in Turkey. It's dated at 11,600 years old at least, because that was the point in time in when it was deliberately buried by humans, and I'll explain that in just a second. It's 50 times larger than Stonehenge and nearly 6,000 years older. It, is, it covers an area of 22 acres at least, and they have only excavated not even 10% of it. It has more than 200 pillars that they know of, as they verified through ground-penetrating radar, many of which are more than 20 feet tall and weigh at least 20 to 30 tons. What makes it even more interesting is it has sculptures of animals throughout, which are three-dimensional. They quite literally went the most difficult route possible that instead of just chiseling away, they chiseled around the area to incredibly high precision. How did they do that? Or why did they go to such a great extent to make it that much more precise? And especially, by the way, no one knows who made this. It's 12,000 years ago. Let's not forget that the Sumerians in Mesopotamia are allegedly the birthplace civilization, and that dates back 6,000 years. So when Gobekli Tepe was discovered in 1994, it completely just astonished archaeologists and scientists from around the world in that it just completely debunked what we thought we knew about uh, the true history of human civilization. Yet mainstream science has been beyond hesitant to address the site of Gobekli Tepe. And to make this site even more confusing to scientists, it has a celestial orientation. In fact, it is the very first structure in the world to have a perfectly north-south facing structure. And when I say north, we're talking true north, which is more precise than a compass because a compass is affected by magnetic declination. How in the world did a civilization 12,000 years ago how are they able to orient something, a massive structure of this size, or any structure at all, to true north? How are they even able to identify it to, quote, literally, a perfect orientation? I mean, what year was it that we were able to establish true north precisely in modern civilization? Now, let me get back to the sensational headlines that are going all over planet Earth right now. Scientists have found 408 skull fragments that contain cut marks within them, as well as some drill holes. Now, out of these 408 fragments, only a few of them actually have any type of cut marks on them whatsoever. In fact, only enough for three skulls. That's right. Out of hundreds of bone fragments they have found, they have found an equivalent of three skulls that have cut marks in them and drill holes. So they've concluded that the whole area was utilized by a skull cult, and it was a temple. Now, I have researched Gobekli Tepe quite a bit, so when I first saw this, I instantly had some concerns. So I decided to read, read the fine print as well as read the actual publication. And what you'll see here is although Science AAAS, which stands for the American Association for the Advancement of Science, which, by the way, is the world's largest general scientific society of peer-reviewed uh, peer journals, happens to mention that these skull fragments only date back between 10 and 7,000 years. Wait a second, there's a discrepancy there. I mean, they acknowledge that this site dates back nearly 12,000 years, but these skull fragments only date back 7 to 10,000 years. And we know through an overwhelming amount of organic material that has been dated to 11,600 years ago, which is just universally accepted for the uh, time frame that this site was buried, but now they have skull fragments that, are th that arrived thousands of years later? Huh. They claim that depictions and carvings on these stone pillars uh, depict human decapitations of a human skull and that these were clearly symbolic of a skull cult and that they must have dangled and strewn about and hung about skulls, <laughs> human skulls, all around the area to uh, scare away enemies. That's their hypothesis. However, this publication completely omits any information whatsoever about the, well, you may have seen the headlines from April of this year, where scientists and astronomers and archaeologists have pieced together various depictions throughout these stone pillars that they suggest actually depicts a cosmic impact with planet Earth. In fact, they theorize that these depictions are actually of star constellations, which just so happen to match up perfectly with that frame of time of when the star constellations would have been in that view, in that direction of the sky, which, by the way, 
just so happens to orient itself with the time frame of when there was a cosmic impact here on Earth 11,600 years ago, which I'll get into in just one second. Now, if you're not aware already, and I've discussed this in numerous other videos, and I'm working on another video with new information uh, that I'm piecing together, but there was absolutely some sort of cosmic event here on Earth approximately 11,600 years ago, and another event 12,980 years ago, give or take five years. I mean, the evidence for this is overwhelming. There is a black matte layer, which encompasses more than 50 million square kilometers of the Earth's surface, and it contains nano diamonds, melt glass, extraterrestrial helium, iridium, which by the way, iridium and extraterrestrial helium come from outer space. Iridium is what makes up almost all meteorites. This just so happens to coincide with the most recent data taken from ice core samples from Antarctica and Greenland that show that 11,600 years ago, there was a massive rise of global sea levels of more than 400 feet that happened in a very short period of time. And that period of time also coincides with a massive extinction event where you had 75% of all mammals in North America go extinct. And it's mysterious. Scientists have never been to identify why that happened. Which, by the way, 120 species of megafauna, or animals larger than 100 pounds, were included in that uh, mass extinction level event. Some of which, by the way, you've never seen before. These animals are incredible looking. I mean, <laughs> take, for example, the, the short-faced bear, which is humongous. Or even the giant ground sloth. I mean, these things are just incredible, and most people have never even seen them before. So you have all those events that happened approximately 11,600 years ago. And then you have Gobekli Tepe, which is universally agreed upon to have been buried by humans 11,600 years ago. The whole site of Gobekli Tepe, which, by the way, in the Turkish language means pot belly pig, that this is an unusual hill. And the entire hill itself is quite literally gravel, stone, and rocks that were filled in, quite literally with buckets or wheelbarrows. I mean, just to paint you a picture, I'm not suggesting that's what the ancients utilized. But someone, people, buried this site. They didn't destroy it. They didn't knock down the pillars. I mean, surely if they had the capability of lifting these stone pillars, I mean, I didn't discuss, by the way, I mean, how did they cut and carve these stones? How did they lift them 12,000 years ago? That's a whole, di whole different uh, topic in itself. But primitive methods can accomplish these things. Uh, so, of course, they could have just knocked them down, right? But yet they chose to bury this site. And when you see these walls that surround uh, Gobekli Tepe and also within itself, these are simply where the archaeologists that have conducted the excavations have simply placed the stones. So these walls that you're seeing here, that's not the ancient walls that they made. The site itself is of the stone pillars. So despite all the most recent data and evidence that shows you that there's something massive that happened 11,600 years ago, science AAAS just completely neg neglects it altogether. Now, I've studied the topic of ancient human civilization quite a bit, and I've observed that quite literally there is a massive cover-up within mainstream science regarding the true history of ancient human civilization. You could say just that maybe a bunch of egos get in the way or that maybe a bunch of people's, they have their careers that have been based upon a narrative that, well, <laughs> has been debunked. So the question of why there's a quote-unquote cover-up, as I would call it, or as many people have, uh, have referred to it as, that's questionable, that's debatable. Let's not get into that. What I want to discuss is the relationship between Monsanto and science AAAS. Quite literally, they have been bought and paid for by Monsanto. And the number of articles that have come out where they defend Monsanto ha is unbelievable, actually. There's so many of them. In fact, so many that even the freaking Huffington Post made an article about it altogether. So I dug a little bit deeper, and I saw that Science AAAS has declared on multiple years that Monsanto has been Employer of the Year, Company of the Year, Leader of Innovation, and all kinds of other awards, most of which aren't even included when I checked Wikipedia, which, go figure, Wikipedia is such... Never mind on that. I'll make a video on that all together someday. So where am I going with this? Well, why can we trust an organization that has been bought and paid for by a disgraceful organization, or any organization? This is supposed to be science, which is supposed to be based on truth. Yet they've clearly been bought and paid for. The evidence of this goes far beyond Monsanto, by the way. Dig into this and look into them for yourselves. But does anyone in their right mind actually think that a, <laughs> that a skull cult is who formed this, the site of Gobekli Tepe? Really? A massive site, like I said, only not even 10% of it has been excavated. It covers more than 22 acres. It's 50 times bigger than Stonehenge. They somehow had the capability of cut and carving these stones in methods uh, with three-dimensional art. It clearly has a celestial orientation, and somehow they knew precisely the direction of true north, which is pretty incredible. But science, AAAS, just completely omits and neglects this information altogether, and instead they come up with 
I mean, a skull cult narrative? I mean, you can just smell the BS here, guys. Am I the only one? I don't know. This is the reason why some people theorize that perhaps Gobekli Tepe may be a time capsule of some kind. That maybe whoever designed this and created it so many years ago, so far ago that we have no information about it altogether, that maybe they want to preserve it so that way civilizations moving forward would have a heads up and be able to see or predict the next cataclysmic event, which we know happens in cycles. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. I'm Jimmy. This is Bright Insight. Like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. But I have many other videos to come on a whole wide variety of topics. Take care, everybody.